It is a pretty hot late summer afternoon here in the South Bay as EA Sports coverage of the NFL brings us to the Silicon Valley and Levi Stadium in Santa Clara. Coming up, we've got what should prove to be a good one as it'll be the Los Angeles Rams taking on the San Francisco 49ers. And a good effort on the return there. Gets him across the 30, up to the 33. As San Francisco's offense returns to the field. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. What a pickup this man was last year. It's Christian McCaffrey. And they're going to have this across midfield and inside the 45. Good yardage as he rumbles for 24 and a first. Bit of a haymaker right after the starting bell, Charles. One play on the ground, and you're already on the other side of the 50. I like how you went boxing there. Essentially went from the way in to walking into the ring, being introduced, and firing away. Big shot early. Now Purdy. Open man is Samuel, complete. And he gets it inside the 35 and just shy of the 30. He'll get a dozen there, and it's a first down, 49ers. Oh, I like that play call there. After a run for good yardage, you get a defense thinking they'll go back to the well. So that's a great time to call play action and give your receivers a little extra edge, and they complete the pass there for another first down. On first down, this is McCaffrey. And only able to get two here, stopped at the 30. Oh, that's a real nice job there by the defensive front. They just engaged and held their ground. But how about the guy who made the play? We often talk about whether they take a good first step or not. Many times, you just don't take any step. Just get your feet moving, get your body going. And then once he made the read, he was able to make the play. Second down and right back to McCaffrey. There he goes, right side. Touchdown, 49ers. And even 30 yards for Christian McCaffrey. And the 49ers will jump on top of the game's first score here this afternoon. Let's make no bones about it. On paper, they're the better team. They're at home. That's a strong opening drive. And just think how many times we've seen this type of a matchup. Just what you said, better team at home should steamroll them. And we've seen it go the other way. Sometimes, though, they buy into it and understand we are the better team. Let's go out and prove it right now. So following the touchdown, here's Moody back out to send it away. And he'll get it up just past the 20 as his guys will go to work at the 21-yard line. And the Rams getting set to go now. Stafford and the Rams come up first and 10 at their own 21. Now the fourth year man, it's Cam Akers. And he'll get about six up to the 27 yard line. A quick burst there and he nicely bit off a pretty decent game. This second and four. Now it's Stafford. Open man right side is Cup complete. And it appears we've got a member of the Rams shaken up on that last play. Well, now they're going to come out and take a look at this injury, and we'll be back in a moment. Third and four. Here's Stafford. 
Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he is going to have a Rams first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. I know at the end of games, coaches always tell us that no one play won or lost a game. But this seems pretty important early, doesn't it? Their, their ability to pick up that first down on third down, I thought that was key. Well, you're already in the hole after the touchdown on the other side. How will you respond? We talk about that a lot, and they responded pretty well there. You go three and out, I think you give up a lot of momentum. You get down two scores, could be an entirely different game. So they've got a nice drive going now. They're in good shape. What's interesting to me is they're also in that spot of the field where you would take a shot. Do you change that up just because you're down a touchdown? Second and ten. Now Stafford. Caught out left side by Robinson. That'll leave him with a third and two coming up. They got eight yards there. They'll come to the line needing only two yards to gain the first here. They'll try and run for this with Akers. And he will have the first down as he gets this to the 47. And hold on here, because on that last run, it looks like we have a player who was shaken up. The medical staff will attend to him, and we will step aside. So from inside Niner territory now, this is first and 10 at the 47. They'll go again here with Akers. And he'll go down shy of the 40 at the 41. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. That was a really nice job by them picking up the run blitz and detecting it and blocking it and turning it into a nice run. And a lot of times you think if you blitz a running play, you're going to smother it. But a lot of the blitzers, they come in a little bit high. They don't have great leverage, and they're easily blocked and turned to the side. And this will move the chains again as the tackle's going to be made at the 49ers' 29-yard line. 12 yards there as they keep this drive rolling. It's another first down. Really a solid start here on the opening drive, Charles. He's now 4-4, four four, and they're already in plus territory. Brandon, he's been so precise to start this game. Like we're watching an operation taking place right now. Master Surgeon at work. That throw complete to his tight end long. It'll go down as a gain of six, and it'll be second down. We've seen quite a bit of the short passing game here early on first quarter, haven't we? We have, and I think it works a couple of ways for, for this team because, number one, you throw the short game until they stop it. And if they're not going to stop it, you keep throwing it, and occasionally you'll break a tackle and turn into a bigger gain. Also, if they start to creep up, start to pressure receivers, now you go over the top, take it deep, and now you get some of those big shots downfield. And on this one, he'll get to the 15, right at the 15-yard line. That one, a first down pickup of eight. Quite the opening drive march they're on right now. It looks a lot like what we saw in practice prior to the game, doesn't it? You know, because on that last big practice beforehand, you go through your offensive script. You go through your play calling. You go through all the stuff and establish things. And it looks like it's going like clockwork right now for them. That'll go for a gain of seven. And it's second down. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made a nice easy pitch and catch. Hoping he can break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. Second down from the eight. They can get a first down by reaching the five. Stafford. He's got Cooper Cup on the slam. And the Rams are going to have a first and goal coming up as the tackle made at the three-yard line. Well, Brandon, obviously no panic in them. They gave up the touchdown. You know, their defensive side did that. But he's already taken them back downfield. I love this field general that they've got. It's almost like he went to the defensive captain and said, don't worry about it. We've got you. Now they got first and goal. Yeah, we're seeing punch counter punch. And this could feeling the pressure here and taken down. A sack back at the seven. Slipping into the backfield for the sack was Oren Burks. That I'm struggling to understand a little bit. That close to the goal line, first down, run the football. If you want to throw it, throw some play action on second down. Now from the seven, here's second and goal. 
Stafford throwing quickly. Complete out wide. Touchdown! Tyler Higby. A seven-yard touchdown grab. And the Rams respond to that opening drive touchdown with one of their own. As a general rule, quarterbacks don't want to lock in on a receiver before the ball is snapped. But in this case, based on the matchup he thought he was going to get, it was favorable for his tight end. He locked in on him early and found him for a touchdown. Extra point by Marr, up and good. And we are tied at seven. Each team's had it. Each team has scored. 7-7 here as the kick's away. Returning from his end zone is Ray Ray McLeod. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. Back out there comes the 49ers offense ready for their second drive. So both of these teams, Charles, coming off touchdowns now, but this offense, they just had to stand on the sideline, watch their opponent author a really impressive drive to reach the end zone. Yeah, and I think you're not telling yourself the truth if you don't think there's some one-upsmanship going on right now because they just had their touchdown answered by a drive of double-digit plays that also found the end zone. Now they want to do something even more impressive to answer that one. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. Well, it's time for them to be good teammates right here, and what I mean by that is possess the ball for a little while, get at least two first downs, Give their defense a chance to settle down a little bit after they give up a touchdown. These two teams all tied after one. The 49ers with the football here to begin the second quarter. Ball on the 27. Here's second and five. A throwing here, Purdy. That's complete. It's Brandon Ayuk. And out across midfield, down to the 45. 28 yards the game there on the catch and run. And this was a nice example of an offensive coordinator scheming his guy open. Just a little underneath route, just trying to free up some space. And it worked awfully well. Got him not just space, but plenty of room to run after the catch to pick up really nice yardage. Over the middle, complete to Samuel. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. Here's Samuel. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play, and now they're faced with a third and one. Third down and one. Purdy will set up to throw it here. He's got his target. That's complete. And he gets it down a yard or two shy of the 30 before he's out of bounds. First catch for him on the afternoon, and it results in a first down. Would it be safe to say that as precise as routes are supposed to be run in the NFL, maybe they're not quite as precise in college ball? That's accurate, yes. And I think we saw a college route in the NFL there. Just find the soft spot, find the dead zone, and find the first down. And that's what he just did. And showcasing those strong legs on that run, getting through one tackle. Now she winds up getting eight there. Offensive linemen love creating space for their guys carrying the ball. But when that guy also breaks tackles and creates extra yardage, they almost feel like he's one of them, and they really embrace him. Another run with McCaffrey on second down. And they'll bring him down at the 18-yard line. 
74 yards now for McCaffrey. It's a first down. That's a nice run right there, able to get to the outside. And so many times, defenses say, okay, we've got you hemmed in. But if you're running the football, at least you know where everyone is coming from. You don't have to worry about the backside at all. That allows you to run with a little bit more confidence as you traverse down the field. Purdy looking to throw on first down here. He'll get this out wide here to McCaffrey. And all the way down inside the five to the four. A nice pickup of 14, and it moves the stick, sets up a first and goal. And this has been a nice answer to the touchdown drive against them a few minutes ago because they've come out and reestablished the tempo. A nice throw there, and they're putting together a very strong drive as a response. Play action, and now here's Purdy to throw it. Rush coming, and he's taken down. Byron Young, the one who got in and finished that play off. Well, that's not how you hope to draw it up there on first and goal, CD, by taking a sack like that. Well, they tried to be aggressive, didn't they? They didn't want to try and work their way past the goal line. They wanted it right there on that play. Unfortunately, it backfired against them. Now they have to try and pick it up here moving forward. And he'll dump this off to his running back, McCaffrey. And he'll get it here to the 10-yard line. Only able to pick up two, and that leads us to third and goal. And that's a good job there by the corner. And we do talk about this a lot, that a lot of corners see their job as simply covering receivers. Tackling isn't everyone's thing. But in this case, he came up quickly and made a nice, sure tackle. That'll be caught by Ayuk. Touchdown, 49ers. 10 yards on the touchdown pass. And the 49ers have now taken the lead. Boy, that route is really tough to cover because if they're running it correctly, you think it's really going to be a slant. Yeah, well, we talk all the time about how it's tough to execute offensively, but you're saying, don't forget, it's tough to cover for the defense, too. Yeah, the number one thing that you're taught is to not get caught inside or get beat inside. So you guard that a little bit more. So that gives you a little bit more space to operate outside if you start your move initially inside if you're a receiver. So here's Moody back out there now to send this one away. From the end zone, here comes Williams. And he will be brought down here inside the 20. Good coverage as he's dropped at the 17. So the Rams coming back onto the field, their second drive of the game. As this offense comes back out here, Charles, they're trailing in this ball game. And they've been on the sideline for a while. They did score their last time out, but they just had to watch that long, sustained drive. So we'll see if they can shake the rust off. Yeah, and that's always a, a question that you have when you have to come off the bench after having sat there for a long time. Are you ready to go? Are you loosened up? But even more so, are you mentally alert and ready to put your best product out there? They'd love to just strike back with a touchdown right here. And if it's a long play, so be it. But the main goal, get a couple of first downs, run some plays, run some clock, allow their defense to get a chance to catch their breath, settle down, and relax a little bit after they just gave up a score. They try to throw on second down, but this one is incomplete. He shook his head right when he released that throw. He knew it was going to be a little off target. Yeah, the excitement got him on that one. Wasn't able to control the fact the receiver was open, and it would have been an easy throw. They come up now, third and five, following the incomplete pass. Back to throw, Stafford. Now a loose football, the ball comes out, and now this is scooped up by the 49ers. And they will take over at the 26-yard line. And now before the ball changes hands, they're going to take a look at this just to make sure that they have it right. And the Rams now coming out on the field. 
So remember, Charles, last time they were out here, they scored, but they just saw the opposition score, and they're trailing right now, so they're trying to keep pace here. They need a touchdown drive. Well, if you're a fan of offense, you're loving this, but if you're a fan of defense, this is tough to watch, and it's also tough to keep that up when you've just watched your opponent march down the field on a scoring drive that lasts into double-digit snaps. You need a score here not just to follow the momentum from your last drive, but put the onus back on your opponent. And that's what they're doing right now, swapping that onus back and forth. A very good punt, but a 16-yard return. And the Niners will go on offense first and 10. Good starting field position for the 49ers as they have it first and 10 at the 39-yard line. Now Purdy. Got a man right side. It's McCaffrey. And he'll be corralled out across midfield down to the 45. The catch and run there, good for 16 and a first. So many times in my career I've heard coaches talk about completions are one thing. But as long as we're there at the catch and we get guys on the ground, we can live with that. But if you're going to give up 10, 12, 15 yards after the catch, then your defense is going to be in a lot of trouble. McCaffrey running up the middle, dancing away at the 35. And he's going to get his guys another first down. Back-to-back -back good runs to start the drive. This one, 13 yards. On first down, Purdy. His throw incomplete. Offense was moving it a little bit, had them back on their heels, but they earn a brief pause by forcing the incompletion. That gives them a quick chance to regroup and try and mount a stand before they're backed up even further. Now a second and ten. Out of the gun, Purdy. Now a quick throw there, but it's going to be incomplete. Feels like they're getting caught in between here because they didn't completions on first and second down. Now you got to worry a little bit about the clock because you prefer not to give them another shot here in the first half. But if you don't pick up the first down, guess what? You're likely going to have to. Now they face a third and ten after back-to-back -back incompletions. Back to throw, Purdy. Oh, he had him. He was open, but he couldn't get it to him. It's incomplete. I see the surprise in your face there, partner. That is a rare incompletion from him. He's been on point this entire game. He has percentage completion-wise way up. Not that time. So Purdy off and Moody on for the 49er field goal. This will be from 49 yards out. And his kick is absolutely perfect. And they will move up by 10 now, 17-7. to 7. So that one on target, and it adds to this first-half lead. And maybe we're too early to worry too much about one-score lead, two-score lead, etc. But this is where you kind of start banking those points that come in helpful later on. So after the main field goal by Moody, he's back out to kick this one away. And he won't quite make it to the 25. The Rams offense now making their way out to take over. They trail by 10, 17-7 as they come up on a first and 10. Now Stafford throwing over the middle, and it's incomplete. The coverage was good, but I just wonder if they absolutely fooled the quarterback on that play. I think he was expecting something else. Ended up with nowhere to throw the football successfully. 
Here's second and ten. Stafford. Oh, the ball comes out on the hit, but they'll say it's incomplete. Tough series for the passing game. Things just aren't clicking. Hope it didn't come through on this play and get this series back on track with a completion for enough yardage for a first down. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has them staring at a third and ten. Stafford going to give this to Akers. And some room to maneuver. And he is going to have a Rams first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. I think I saw a lot of shoulders just drop there. And what I mean by that is they finally were able to relax a little bit because that was an important play call. They needed to pick up that first down at this stage of the game. Yeah, couldn't afford another quick drive and out. On first and 10, Stafford. Across the middle, and this pass complete to Cooper Cup. And he's brought down. 15 more there, and they're on a roll. It's another first down. Well, coaches always talk about finding balance on offense. I don't think you can get much more balance than this. Big time run, big time pass. A one-two combination. Looked pretty good. How about that? Let's see, if they, let's see if they can continue to take that kind of a punch, though. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. Nice progress down the field. Was halted by that incompletion. They could try for some safe yards here to get things moving again or keep throwing it and pushing it downfield to try and pick up bigger yardage. Ball on the 42 as they come up second and 10. Now it's Stafford. That's caught. Puka Nakua. The Rams going to go ahead and use the first of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 35 seconds to go in quarter number two. First and ten here, and you know, if they could just get three out of this, something about whittling it to a one-score game at half that might provide a psychological boost. Throwing there, but this pass is going to wind up incomplete. They had their backs up against the wall a little bit, and they come through by forcing an incompletion. Now they've got to continue to ratchet up the intensity a couple more times and get off the field before giving up any more yardage. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. Throwing a Stafford. And that is incomplete. A lot of force bearing down on him there. He could not hang on. It's third down. They haven't been able to stop them so far this series, but getting a nice little stand from their defense now. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have them looking at third and ten. Stafford looks to throw again. That is caught, and down he goes, taking it inside the 10, just shy of the 5 at the 6. First and goal, and they got to be thinking a chance to get right back into this football game. Here's Stafford. That's out to the flat for Akers. Touchdown, Rams! Cam Akers as the first half is winding down. And the Rams are able to cut into this lead in the final seconds of the first half. So the late touchdown there, and that certainly changes things as we move toward halftime. Yeah, and there's a potential for things to change even more because remember, they get the ball first to start the third quarter. So they could potentially double up here and take the lead. A great opportunity for them.
So not much time to speak of remaining in this first half as the kicks away. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. And the Niners ready to go on offense for the final time in this first half. And they may just be content to take this three-point lead and head into the locker room. Final 12 seconds of the half now as they've got it first and 10. And they'll indeed start on the ground to run that clock. And defensively, they're just looking to keep him contained as they're able to get him down. A good run there on first down, and it'll leave them with a second and two. So we've hit halftime. Just a field goal separating these two teams at the break. As we send you cross country to Orlando, Jonathan Coachman is there and has our EA Sports halftime report. And able to get this out to the 25. Out come the Rams. They'll have it first here to begin the third quarter. Well, Charles, in that first half, we saw a fair amount of offense on both sides of the football, and now the team trailing here will start with it in the third quarter. And we both know this coach pretty darn well, don't we? Because his game planning is always on point. And now that he's getting the ball to start the second half, how about all the offense that you already referenced in the first half? He'll put that all together and come out with something really strong, I believe, to get things going here in the third quarter. Now they trail by three, and they just got three yards to start the third quarter. The goal of a wide receiver screen is get enough blockers in front to create a wall and let him pick his spot to run the football. How about the defense there swarming to it and not allowing that to happen? Did not let him get downfield. Here's a run with Akers on second down. And he takes this up to the 40-yard line before being corralled. 62 yards rushing now on eight carries for him so far. The more football I watch, the more I want to check and see if teams are going to panic when they're down on the scoreboard. And this team has shown no signs of doing that. A lot of the time, they come out after the half, things haven't worked so well in the first go-around, they won't throw the football like crazy. But the weight Akers hit, he coughs it up. And now this is scooped up by the 49ers. And his guys are going to take over at the 34-yard line. Following the fumble recovery, Purdy. And down he goes. They sack him back right around the 41-yard line. Well, Aaron Donald just so strong they can't block him. And he records the sack. I'm sure a lot of time was spent in the locker room, Charles, with talking with his defense about setting a tone here in the third quarter when you're down on the scoreboard. A sack like that, maybe that can get him going. Yeah, you have to believe exactly what you just said, that they got together and said, let's be some change agents here. Let's go ahead and turn things around. Let's be the force under pressure, and they got to him again. It'll go in the books as a seven-yard loss on the sack, and it's third down. So when you have good field position to start a drive and you give up back-to-back -back sacks, that can be demoralizing for a team. Now third down and very long. Purdy. And this is going to be incomplete. Oh, that's going to hurt a bit because they needed to come through with a completion there. Now a drive that started with great field position is facing fourth down. Here comes the 49ers punter now, as he should be able to pin him back deep here with his first punt. And no return here. Where will they spot it? They say just outside the 20-yard line. L.A. readies for its next possession. And a fumble last time. Ball security. Talk about it all the time in the National Football League. They've got to be better at it on this drive. Don't you think that when every team gets together for the first time, I don't care if it's OTAs, mini camps, first and first day of camp in the regular season, ball security comes up about, what, the second sentence of the coach's yeah. address? And those are so many drills focus on that. All the time, and they do drills to make it even tougher to simulate game situations. Doesn't always work out, though. Well, that's just a pile of bodies there, and that's when you kind of find out who's a tough guy, right? Who can stand up and make a play? It was only a three-yard run. But for both sides, they had to walk away from that feeling like, okay, 
I can stand up when the going gets tough in here. Meanwhile, Stafford's throw pulled in by Jefferson. And he'll get this up to the 34-yard line. It's a gain of 11 and a first down L.A. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook, but oh so effective. Nice completion there. Keeps the sticks moving. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Now Stafford. And this one right back into the hands of Jefferson. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. Ten more for him on that one. He's been a busy man. It's a first down. A couple of first downs right in succession, and this is an offense that can really use a good drive, and they're off to a fast start here. They'll run on first down with Akers. Oh, what a juke into space. Now he takes this one down almost all the way to the 30. Good yardage as he rumbles for 24 and a first. They're making it look easy out there. Another first down. So, so far on this drive, let me do this little bit of math here. Four plays, three first downs. That's a pretty good recipe for success. So, from inside Niner territory now, this is first and 10 down at the 31. Now he's going to swing this one out to his running back. And he is out of bounds inside the 30. They'll give him four yards there, and it'll be second down. He's already proven to be a factor in the running game on this drive. Now he gets involved in the passing game. I think what we're seeing here is the modern version of workhorse in the NFL, being able to run it and catch it with equal proficiency. To throw on second down to Stafford. Over the middle, and there's a diving catch. The Rams, they are on the move. They've got another first down. To me, there's nothing like watching rookie effort in the NFL. So excited to be there. They're going to give you the max on each and every play, aren't they? Well, he proved himself on that catch, that's for sure. I think he may have proved himself to the point where he's going to get a second here. From the red zone now, Stafford. He's got this to the tight end, Hopkins. So give him five yards there on the pitch and catch, and that's going to bring up second down. I know sometimes we can get fooled when we watch him make catches, as we just saw him do there, because he really looks like a wide receiver the way he goes about his business. Yeah, 230, 240 range. Yeah, not, not super huge. Maybe not counted on to be that inline point of attack blocker that we used to have in the good old days, but you can flex him out. You can run wide receiver routes with him. You can make him a primary target, and that's how he'll shred a defense. A minimal gain there on the eighth play of the drive. Well, the strategy was evident there. Get it to your tight end and make it a one-on-one -on -one play with a cornerback. Who's usually going to win that one? The tight end, but not there. Not in this situation. How about the corner defeating that logic and making a really nice tackle? Meanwhile, on third down, they take a shot at the end zone, but it's incomplete. What an excellent defensive stand there in the red zone. Nice tight coverage. They certainly recognized how important it was to bring up fourth down here. Now Brett Maher for the field goal try. From the left half, should be a fairly easy one here. The kick by Maher is good, and that will tie things at 17-all. That drive took him inside to 10. Good job defensively to hold him to three. Yeah, I like how you did that. Give a little tip of the cap to the stop troops there because they didn't give up a touchdown in that situation, right? Made them kick the field goal. And yeah, points went against them, but that feels a whole lot better running off the field. Seventeen, seventeen. the score. All even to this point as the kick's away. And he takes this near the 25. Just a little pass there. Call it the 26. Now the 49ers settling in for their next drive. Uh, Charles, a very uninspired effort the last time we saw them out there. It was a quick three and out, then they punted the football. Yeah, and you never want to get stopped so soundly during a series. But what would be even worse now? 
is letting it happen again right here. They've got to get going. Purdy bootlegging it. Open man is Samuel, complete. And he gets this one just shy of the 40. They'll mark him down at the 39. First down yardage on the first play of the drive, 14 yards. Well, that certainly has to feel good. It's not all the time that the play caller should get all the credit. Sometimes I think in the huddle, the quarterback just says, hey, who's going to make a play for me? I just need something right here. And the end result there, nice first down. Drive keeps moving. The tight end, Kittle, has it on the left side. And he'll be out of bounds after getting this one across the 40. The result, only four yards there on the play. And that will bring up second down. Well, they're unable to convert that into much, but it's never a bad idea to try to get the ball into a tight end of his caliber's hands and see what kind of disruption he can cause. They go play action here, Purdy. He'll get this out wide here to McCaffrey. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. The Niners have the first down on a gain of 11. Well, I like the play design there. They occupied the defense downfield, everyone trying to account for someone. But unfortunately, they didn't account for the running back slipping out of the backfield. And he was absolutely unnoticed and wound up getting big yards on that play. And they run the option here on first and 10. As he's got this down inside the 40 to the 39. He'll pick up seven there on the first down keeper. And that is going to do it for this third quarter of action. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now here in Santa Clara. Now second and three. All even as we get ready to start the fourth. On second down, McCaffrey. And everyone on their assignment defensively there as he'll be taken down behind the line. It'll be a loss of a yard, and that's going to lead to a third and four coming up. Part of the thinking when you bring in extra tight ends, you're hoping that each of your guys gets those one-on-one -on -one blocks and creates a crease for your runner. You know what the converse is, though? You've got to win those one-on-one -on -one blocks, and when you don't, that's the result you end up with. Throwing here, Purdy. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And this is going to be another first down as the tackle's going to be made at the Rams' 27-yard line. The drive stays intact with a pickup of 13. And partner in a tie game in the fourth quarter, you and I both know in the NFL, that's when you lean on your stars, and he came through with a nice catch right there. And that's incomplete. Whenever I see a drop like that, I have to kind of take a step back and check myself a little bit. So used to seeing those big guys make big time spectacular plays that when they drop one, I have to remind myself, we ask a lot out of these guys. Block and catch the football, not easily done in today's NFL. Second down, here's Purdy to throw. It's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. Oh, that would have been a nice one to hit on in a tie game. You start to think that one big play, maybe the next big play, could turn out to be the game winner. They took the big shot, but it winds up incomplete. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have them looking at third and ten. A handoff, McCaffrey running right. And they stop him short of the first as he can only get to the 20. A good pick up there, seven yards, but it brings up fourth down. Temptation there certainly to go for this, but I think you have to kick it, right? The, the temptation coming from the fantasy owners, right? <laughs> I mean, there are some that are going to want to kick it because they may have that kicker, but overall, get more yardage, maybe a chance for a touchdown, but no, absolutely not. Run that field goal kicker out there. Kick it. You've got to take the chance to take the lead right now. You don't want to put it back on your defense. So the drive here ends with a field goal. It does give them the lead, but this one's still certainly a long ways from over. It definitely puts a lot of pressure on your defense to hold the lead, right? They're happy to have it and happy to be out there trying to do so. But I know as a former player, in the back of their mind, they're thinking, why don't you score the touchdown and seal this thing?
So following the touchdown, here's Moody back out to send it away. From the end zone, here comes Williams. And ultimately cannot get this out to the 25-yard line as he's dropped at the 23. The Rams ready to go on offense. And now they find themselves trailing following the field goal. Still a good amount of time in this fourth quarter, but this drive very well could determine the outcome of this ball game. Stafford and the Rams come up first and 10 at their own 23. He starts with a give to Akers. And up to the 35 before they're able to knock him down. 101 yards rushing for him now as he has been tremendous all day long. Another carry for their leader and a good one. It's crunch time. They'll need him to continue to be productive in both the run and passing game in order for them to try and snatch a victory. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Going right back to Akers. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. Not a huge carry there on first down, but not all of them will be. But still, all in all, a positive play for the offense. It's all about picking up at least a few to set up what you're going to do here on second down. And they'll come up second and seven. Now a quick throw into the hands of Jefferson. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. To throw is Stafford. And that one complete downfield to Cup. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. That'll be marked as a 27-yard pickup. And here we are in the fourth quarter, partner, and watch him drive for what would be a go-ahead touchdown. And you and I both know this is where you need a quarterback who can keep his cool back there, not just for himself, but to keep the rest of the team relaxed, too. On first and 10, Stafford. And that one drops down incomplete. Good coverage there. Forced the ball free, and it's second down. Normally, you think the tight end's going to be able to catch the football and handle that contact. But in this case, maybe a little too much target to hit. That one was timed well. Incomplete. Once again, they'll come up on the 26-yard line, second and 10. They'll fake the give. Now Stafford. And it's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. What would look like a march to the end zone has hit a momentary roadblock with that incompletion. No need to panic. They just got to come up with a high percentage play call and see if they can get their offense back on track. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have them looking at third and ten. Here's Stafford. I oh, had a man open, but he missed him, and it's incomplete. The coverage keyed in on him since that last completion his way. He earned a little more attention on that route, and that made it a lot tougher to get a clean throw his way. So a big one coming now for Brett Maher. He hit his first. Now this from 43. Maher able to put this one through. And in the fourth quarter, this game is tied. Well, you talk about clutch. That one was right down Broadway, and this game's all even here in the fourth. Yeah, he didn't leave any doubt, did he? Good snap, good hold, dead center. Almost like a big-time golfer in a major, firing at a pin from the fairway, <laughs> trying to win the tournament going down the stretch. Now this one setting up for a great finish. All tied in the fourth as the kick's away. And out a little across the 25 to the 27. And San Francisco gets set to go here. And we essentially have a brand new ball game. After that last field goal has tied us all up, we brace for what should be an exciting rest of this fourth quarter. 
Purdy going to lead the 49ers to the line, first and 10 at their own 27. And he'll start by handing this off to McCaffrey, and he'll manage to pick up about four. It's second down. Well, the end of all that hitting and hollering, it was a four-yard run, so the offense is going to go back to Huddle and feel pretty good about themselves. Defensively, you have to feel okay because you didn't let it turn into a bigger run, but the goal, shut it down for two yards or less. That's when you start to feel good about yourselves. Throwing on second down, it's Purdy. He's got the hookup downfield to Samuel. Now he's going to get this all the way down inside the 35. It's a gain of 34. Talk about a momentum shifter right there. Tie game, fourth quarter. These are the plays that win you games. And now defensively, the question becomes, how do you respond? So the big play changes the complexion of things. Here's first and 10 just outside the 30. Purdy completes this one here to McCaffrey. And he gets this one inside the 15, just a yard or two shy of the 10. Great gains back-to-back. -back. Last time over 30 yards, better than 20 here. A lot of times the key is just get him the ball and let him do his thing, and they got it out to him on the left side, and he did exactly that. Excellent run after the catch. Purdy looking to throw on first down here. And he's got his man in stride, complete. They'll wind up getting seven on the play, and it'll be second down. Now that's staying ahead of the chains. Really good pickup on first down, hitting the tight end there. Now it brings up a second and manageable. Just found a hole in that zone. Here's second down and three. Purdy now on second down. That is caught by the tight end, Kittle. Touchdown, 49ers. Four yards on the touchdown grab. And the Niners have broken this deadlock and have taken the lead here in the fourth. So still time remaining here in this fourth quarter, but the touchdown there puts them back out in front. And you and I both know that their defense will not very subtly remind everyone that they started all of this because they held firm on the last drive and only gave up a field goal. Gave it back to the offense in a tie game and said, okay, your turn now. Make something happen. And they went down the field and scored. So here's Moody back out there now to send this one away. And he'll be stopped up at the 25. So now Stafford and the Rams down 27-20, 2.16 to play. Plenty of time here. They've got three timeouts and the two-minute warning as they've got it first and 10. Stafford on first down. He'll get this one to Cup complete. And he's brought down, getting this one up to about the 35. First down at Stafford. Open man, Higby, the tight end. I don't know that those medium five-ish yard gains are going to do it right now. Probably should have dropped it, right? Yeah, that way you save more time on the clock. But I know receivers, they think they can catch it and break a tackle and turn it into a big game. Now second and four. Now it's Stafford. Completes this to Jefferson. 
Short gain, short gain last two plays. Who do you think's excited about that? Absolutely. This defense, they're saying go right ahead with those. Plenty of time. All three timeouts still remain. Here's first and ten now. Stafford hooking up with Akers. And a gain of four gets him right to the midfield stripe. They're making steady progress, but I see your face. You're worried about that clock. I'm worried about the clock, and at some point, you have to have a splash play in there as well. Here's second down. Stafford now to throw. And that one's going to be off target and incomplete. Now we're in the situation where the quarterback's got to take full charge of his huddle. Got to totally command and make sure all eyes are on him. All focus is locked in. Going to call multiple plays and go over different situations and scenarios to make sure everyone is on the same page. Stafford. And he's able to get this one down to the 40-yard line. The Rams going to go ahead and use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the game. They'll come up first and 10 here. Now Stafford. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Whew, that's certainly not the worst thing. It stops the clock and lets your offense catch its breath and lets us exhale a little bit. Now I expect them to call a couple plays in the huddle so they're ready if a tackle happens inbounds. A little less than 40 seconds remaining. Here comes second and 10. He's back to throw. Connecting with Cup here on the out route. And remember, field goal does them no good in this situation. You got to think they should be taking some shots for the end zone soon. Well, the faithful in full roar here in Santa Clara. This is third down. He'll look to throw. Able to find the open man. That's complete. So now with six seconds remaining, we get a timeout on the field. Here we go. First and goal. Back to throw. And this ball is caught. It's a touchdown. And now in the final seconds, they're a PAT away from likely getting this thing to overtime. Yes, sir. That touchdown puts them in striking distance. And let me tell you something. Forget being conservative here. Go for it. Go for two. Well, going for it on the road. Want to win it right now? Want to win it right now. Have the momentum. Go ahead and get it done. The 49ers now going to use the first of their timeouts. And as the two teams talk it over on their respective sidelines, we take a break. Mar on for the extra point. And he has got it. So barring something crazy on the kickoff, we're looking at an extra period to decide this one. Oh, my God. 
So overtime on the horizon, barring a wild finish here as the kick's away. Four quarters, not enough. We're all even, and to overtime we go. How much fun is this for everyone who's watching the game? How much fun is it for us to see this one get an extra period to get settled? So it's the Rams who are going to get the football first as we are back underway here in overtime. And no return here to begin the overtime session. That'll be a touchback. Set to begin their next drive, the Rams offense at the line. This drive here beginning probably with a pair of motivated groups. Remember, the offense scored a touchdown on their last time out. Look and repeat that in Charles' defense. They were very frustrated after giving up six the last time on the field. And frankly, it's just a battle of wills in a lot of ways because you know they're both motivated. They both game plan for this drive, and they both have specific outcomes in mind. To me, it just comes down to who can execute better and which side can step up and assert its will over the other. A gain there of 30 big ones. And how about that? So many times the big play is what does it in overtime. They got one there, moved the ball past midfield, and now you know they're on the move looking to score the game-winning touchdown because a field goal won't finish the game. They'll go with Akers here up the middle. And nothing much materializing there on the first down run. He'll get a couple, and that's it. Certainly a nice job there by the defense rallying to the football and getting him on the ground, but I think the play gets made by the defensive front because if they can't get upfield, their job is to go ahead and get low, almost get into a ball sometimes, stack things up, and make it difficult for the runner to find a hole. Second down, they'll go with Akers again. And he's going to have this pretty close to a first down as the tackle is made at the Niners 29. 112 yards rushing for him now as he is just trying to will his guys to an overtime victory. So much of the game today. We're looking for hybrid players, guys who can do a combination of jobs. And anyone who plays a strong safety position now more than ever is a hybrid type player. Half defensive back that covers passes and half linebacker that makes tackles. We just saw the linebacker make that play. And he is going to have a Rams first down, and he's going to have it by plenty, able to get eight yards there on third and two. Well, good start for him under center here in overtime. Now three of three. And this is where you have to know who you have playing quarterback. You've got a confident thrower right now, someone who's taking care of the ball, but not being timid as well, and is moving the team downfield. That opens up your playbook and allows you to dial up some big shots if you want them. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. That was a classic example of trying to run with the ball without securing the catch. He was thinking about those rack yards instead of making the catch first and then taking off. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and ten. A give up the middle to Akers. And able to get him down, but he does reach the five. That one goes for 16 yards. It sets him up first and goal. Most of their damage has been done through the air. I mean, they've rung the bell three times with passing touchdowns, but guess what? Ground game has not been neglected. Nice little burst right there. Now they've got three tight ends here on first and goal to add some extra mass. Oh, how about this on first and goal? And he will push his way forward down to about the three-yard line. It's a gain of a couple, and it'll be second and goal. you got to be ready for anything when you play defense against this head coach. That is not something you'd expect to see here in the red zone, but it winds up getting him a few yards. So the ball position now at the three. Here's second and goal. Akers is going to take this one in for a Rams touchdown. That almost looked too easy, and I think thanks goes to the offensive line for making it look easy. Yeah, I agree with you totally on that one. I'm not sure how much everyone understands the preparations that go into a game for an offensive line because there's a reason that running backs and quarterbacks give them big gifts at the end of a season after a big year. The consistency and the continuity it takes to know each other and execute their blocks is pretty impressive.
Following the touchdown, here's Marr to kick it away. Here's McLeod from his end zone. And he'll go down as this drive will start at the 25-yard line. And the 49ers getting set to trot out there. A lot of time for this unit to game plan on the sideline after that drive that they watched the other side just score. But remember, last time they were out, they scored as well. We'll see if they can seize that momentum right back. And they have had a lot of time to cool off from reaching the end zone the last time. So have they been able to keep themselves mentally sharp and into this game, even though they haven't been on the field? And you and I both know, one big play, though, gets them right back up to that level. And this dominant defensive performance continued on that play. This poor quarterback has now received the protection he needs and has had to pick himself up off the turf far too often. Got to assume this defense will be charging again here. It's second and 15. Now he's going to swing this one out to his running back. One yard is the loss. They back up even further to a third and 15. I believe I could see what they were trying to do there, but unfortunately, the back ran out of room. Too close to the sideline. And for defenders, we're often taught 11 on the field. Those sidelines can become the 12th defender. It worked to the defense's advantage on that play. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. And he slides and covers up at the end as he's going to be able to pick up decent yardage. The scramble good for a nice gain of 10 yards, but still fourth down. Nice call on defense, rolling out the nickel package for that big third down play. And he did an excellent job locking down coverage and forcing him to try and run for it. And he doesn't get there, which brings up a big fourth down call. Purdy on fourth down. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he is going to have the Niners first down. And they come up with a big one there to keep the drive moving and then some. A gain of 26 and a conversion there as well on fourth down. And that's a big pickup of a first down. And you know that all week, both sides of the ball, offense and defense, are going through every situation. And in this case, the offensive guys had the right play dialed up because defensively, you work on fourth down situations as well. And deflating for the defense, they can't get the stop here. Back-to-back -back receptions for him, and it's another first down. Offensively, back-to-back -back really nice plays. This defense, they've got two timeouts, maybe should burn one. Yeah, when you get back-to-back -back explosive plays, to me, anything over 10 yards, I don't care if it's a run or a pass, I count it as an explosive play. That sets your defense back on its heels. A timeout here would be a good idea and try and get themselves settled because we're an OT. This is big time. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. Well, a momentary speed bump there with that throw, partner. The defense had other ideas, and they're trying to mount a small stand before this drive reaches the end zone. Ball on the 30 as they come up second and 10. Purdy sets up to throw again. That's Samuel caught left side. Four yards the gain, and it'll bring up a third down. They are in need of six yards here if they hope to move the chains. Here's Purdy now on third and goal. And he is caught. And he'll go out of bounds inside the 15-yard line. Charles, you get into these overtime situations, that's not a bad guy to dial into. Well, when you have to have plays, especially in a spot as you just described, we're an OT, you've got to go to the guys you can trust and you know are going to make the plays. Well, they say, it's not the X's and the O's, it's the Jimmy's and the Joe's. On first down, Purdy. Got a man and he hits him in stride. And the Niners are gonna be looking at first and goal as they move this down to the four yard line. Just picking up yardage in bunches here these last few plays, they have moved right down the field and just like that, they're gonna be set up with a first and goal. Throwing, Purdy. That's to the pylon and incomplete. And down here, first and goal. If it's not there, don't force it. You've got at least two, if not three more shots at it. 
So that's a wise move to get rid of it. Line of scrimmage, again the four-yard line, second and goal. Purdy to throw. He'll get this out wide here to McCaffrey. Touchdown, 49ers! Well, he is putting in a great all-around game, Charles. He already ran one in for a score, and now they utilize him in the passing game. And they put a lot of pressure on a defensive coordinator and a defense, don't they? Because they're used to him as a runner. But it turns out he's just as dangerous as some of those receivers, and he showed it right there. You don't pay enough attention to him defensively, he makes you pay. Moody good with the extra point, and that will tie the ball game. So a tie ball game here as the kick's away. From the end zone, here comes Williams. And makes it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. And the L.A. offense ready for this next possession. As this offense takes the field again, it's been a while since they've been out there. We just saw that long touchdown drive by the opposition. But remember, when this crew was out here last, Charles, they scored as well. And let's make sure we give both offensive staff some credit, and especially the offensive coordinators, because we spoke with both of them in the lead up to this game, and both were really confident in their game plans. They felt like they had scouted their opponents and focused on specific areas in practice this week to make sure that they were ready to go. And frankly, it looks like they both did an excellent job. Yeah, we'll see if those game plans can keep this streak of touchdowns going here. From the 29, here's the second down and four. They'll fake the give. Now Stafford. Pass complete there to Nakua. And he'll have it past midfield almost to the 40 before being taken down. So from inside Niner territory now, this is first and 10 at the 42-yard line. On the handoff, it's Akers. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. Well, any lane that might have been open there was closed pretty quickly, and that was because the defensive front, they won that battle at the point of attack at the line of scrimmage. They used great leverage, held their spot, and stacked him up. Second down and eight. On the give, this is Akers. And he's going to have this pretty close to a first down as the tackle is made at the Niners' 33. Brandon, all things considered, they have to feel pretty good about getting that type of a gain considering the blitz that they just had against them. Now a timeout called for by the offense. It'll be their second and final timeout, remember, here in overtime. We'll be back. So it all rests now on the right foot of Brett Maher. And the 49ers going to take another timeout. They'll be left with just one remaining here at OT. And now it all rests on the right foot of their kicker. This to win it in overtime. And he got it. The kick is good in overtime. He's able to split the uprights. And the Rams have won the game.
And for the visitors, it is going to be a happy flight home. It is always such a treat, Charles, in the NFL when you can go on the road and get a victory, and that's exactly what they accomplished here today. Ah, oh, the trip home so much sweeter, isn't it? All the noise they heard before, how tough it is to win on the road, how tough it is to play in this stadium, how hyped up that crowd's going to be. They just used it as fuel, came in full of confidence, believed in themselves, and got it done. So that'll do it for us, for my partner, Charles Davis, and all the hardworking men and women on our crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching.